What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about how to install MB on Casa OS. So a few weeks ago if you remember we did the Casa OS video where I showed how Casa OS works and all the basics about it and how to set up some apps and stuff like that. Somebody commented on that and asked if I could show how to set up MB and map the files and some of the settings so we're going to go over that. Today I am going to be using the Zima board again if you remember we talked about this a few weeks ago and I showed how to use Casa OS and stuff. I know I just said it but this is what we're going to be using. I do have the higher version of it. I have the one with 8 gigs of RAM and 4 cores, and it just has some basic onboard memory. It does come with add-ons that you can get if you want to get like the PCI board. Remember, it does have the full track, so you can put a board in here and then have uh, NVMe drives or uh, M.2 SATA drives. I'll, I'll show you what that add-on looks like. So this is the add-on board. It is just the PCI slot that goes in, and it just kind of slides in. Uh, there we go. And then you get expansion for two more drives. So one's going to be NVMe and one's just going to be an M.2 SATA. I did run this when we did the Proxmox server build off of the Zima board. And of course there is actually SATA ports on here. So if you want to put in two hard drives or whatever you want to do, you can. There's two SATA ports and a power plug. You just got to get the Y adapter. They sell it on Ice Whale's website and it's also available on Amazon. And just to finish up the uh, I.O., there's two NICs and two USBs, the mini display port, and then the power jack. So that's just the basics on the Zima board. This is what we're going to be using today to set up MV on Cost OS. So that's enough of the talking. Let's get right into it. All right. So before we start, I just want to go over some of the basics about MV. So if you're not familiar, MV is another one of the media servers that can be self-hosted, similar to Plex or Jellyfin. We've covered Jellyfin and Plex in the past, but today we're going to be talking about MV. It was requested in a comment, so that's why we're working on it. It's very similar to Jellyfin. I believe it's actually the original when Jellyfin was forked off of it. I could be completely wrong, but I believe that's how it was. It's very similar in the fact that you just set up the server, you can install the apps. It has all the supported apps that you can run it off of. So if you want to run it on a computer, a NAS, and it's also supported on all these others. So like Android, Cloud Run, Docker, Nvidia Shield, Flatpak, Snap, but you could also get it on your other devices like iPhone, Raspberry Pi, Samsung TV, Fire Stick. You can put it on your Alexa. You can go on Xbox 360 if you still have one running, I guess. And then there's also Xbox One. So there's a wide variety of supported devices that you can actually install the client program on to run it off of. And then similarly to Plex, there is a Premiere, like a licensing version of it. So if you do want to get it, you do get additional benefits, such as you could download your media. There's a DVR. I'm guessing if you have it set up to have like a TV going through it, you can record your shows that way as well you get some additional apps there's a hardware accelerated transcoding so if you do run a computer that has a gpu in it you could use that to accelerate transcoding instead of using like the onboard cpu trend um hardware you get some intros you get support for carplay and android auto so i guess if you're listening to like the music you can get the android auto or carplay app you get some other features like cover art theater it'll convert contact um It'll convert the content, so I guess it'll just do like some automatic transcoding. You get some backups and some smart home support. So nothing too crazy, but it is some nice benefits. If you are interested, it's $5 a month, $54 a year, or $119 a lifetime. Pretty similar in price to Plex, and I don't believe Jellyfin has a license that you have to get. So just the options that you have, but it is additional. If you're interested in some of the uh, really how-to, you have your basic documentation or like the quick start, but we're going to go over that today for Casa OS. But that's enough of all this, let's get right into the setup. Like I said, we are going to be doing this off my Zima board that I had that was sent over by Ice Whale, which I am very grateful for because we get to make content with it like this. First thing is after you log in, you get your Zima board all sorted out, you can get your homepage and you can come over to files. So I have a media folder. I don't remember if this was default or I made it, um, but you can come over here and then I just made some subdirectories in here for movies, music, and TV shows. In here I have Ted, if you remember this is the one that we ripped off the DVD with Make MKV. If you're interested in how to rip your DVDs so you can have digital copies, I'll have a card up above so you can check out that video. Super helpful of course if you're going to be using it for like an MV server you want to put on your computer, your Zima board, whatever you're going to be using. But just build out some directories and if you have any content you want to preload and make it a little bit easier, you can put it in any of these folders. One thing I do like that you can actually upload right through the UI. So over here you have upload or create. So let's say I want to add another movie. I can just come over here and upload it right from there. Or you could probably just win SCP to the box and then you could just SCP it over a lot quicker. 
whatever your preference is. So this is all set up, so now we're gonna go over to start setting up MV. First thing we're gonna do is come over to the App Store. This is where it's gonna have all the available Docker containers or apps as Casa OS refers to them as. And you can see actually here's Jellyfin, there's LiDAR, there's some of the stuff like that. I'm just gonna come over here and search for MV. And I gotta type it right. There we go. So we're gonna click on it and it'll give us a little overview. It's pretty simple. If you wanna do a custom install, you can. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna do a basic one. So we're just gonna install it. I'll give us a minute and then we'll be right back. So after it does finish the install, just give it a minute or so to process the server and get it running. You can see over here now we have the MB app and it only takes maybe a minute or two to get the install actually done. We're just deploying a Docker container so it's really simple. One thing to make sure before we start this process, just to make life easier, make sure you have some sort of media directories mapped out just so you can at least set them up for the setup of MB. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So we're just going to open up MB. And you see it's going to redirect us over and this is going to be the fresh install for mb so it's going to say welcome we're going to go through the wizard i'm going to put my language as english because that's what i speak we're going to make a username make a password and we're all set we hit next i don't want to save it and then we're going to set up our media library so this is where we're going to map those directories i was just talking about so i'm going to click new library i'm going to do movies i'm going to map the folder and if you remember mine was under data movies so it's right over here, it's nice and easy to grab, and if there's any extra you want, or if you want to have it to a network share, you can. Of course, if you run like a mini PC and you store all your media on a NAS, it actually shows it right up here how you can access it over a network share. So two options, I have it locally just to make it easier, but if you want to whack whack over to a network share, you can. I'm gonna click okay. So now that's set up. If you want to add another one, you can uh, select the path but that's movies, so I'm just gonna click okay. I'm gonna leave all the default settings because they should all be fine. I don't really wanna change anything. I don't have any specific settings I wanna change, and this is usually what I do on a media server. I'm gonna click okay. If you wanna add another library, let's say for music, you can, you just go over there and then find the music folder if you have one. So I have TV shows, I should have, let's do this. Let's do slash data slash music I think I have that oh what time so I'm just gonna go back I'm gonna do uh, TV shows I know that's in there I'll just scroll down again and then here's TV shows so then I have TV shows and movies mapped and again I'm just gonna leave all the basic settings I'm gonna click OK and now you can see over here I have movies and TV shows so this is all set it supports all other kind of content so if you are wanting to add other stuff like pictures or music you can it has availability for it. I'm just gonna click next. And then just select whatever your language is for the metadata. So again, I speak English, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. We're gonna click next. You could have it so it tries to automatically set the ports in your firewall. Usually this doesn't work, but if you have it configured, it looks like UPnP, it might. But most likely if you wanna make this accessible outside of your house, you're gonna have to go into your firewall or your router and just open up the port for MV. So I'm just gonna uncheck this because I don't want this for now. If you do want to give it a shot, you can see if it'll map it for you. If not, you just gotta go into your router and set that afterwards. We'll click next. I agree to the terms. And we're all done. Now it's just telling me that we can go on like the Fire Stick or Google Play or any of these other uh, devices and download the app. I'm gonna click finish. I'm gonna log in. And that's gonna be with your login that you just made. And over here you see here's our dashboard. I only have Ted currently in the movies folder and I don't have anything else under TV shows, which is okay. But if you come over here, you can see it has some information on the movie, gives you the description, what quality. I just ripped it off a DVD, so it's 480, but you get whatever you want. If you want to play it, you can get a trailer, anything else, that's all set. Other than that, we can go over to our settings. And here it's just gonna give you the basic. It's gonna give you like an activity log. It's gonna give you any alerts. It's gonna tell you what port's running on. And then if you need to restart to finish applying some updates, which you probably should, just make sure everything's up to date. If we come over to settings, we can change any of those basic settings that we already configured. And I guess if you have some custom CSS to change out your dashboard, if you want, you could do it that over there. I've tried this in the past on Jellyfin and it never really worked out well. I was doing a little looking into it. I didn't see anything how to really do it. So I'm just gonna leave it. It looks like there's probably plugins that you could add in and do it that way. So that's fine if you wanna go that way. Over here you can have your users, so if you want to add another user, let's say I want to do Carmine 2, you can actually, which is nice, you can copy the settings over somebody else, so if you have like admins and then you just have viewers, you could set like your viewer profile and your admin profile, and let's say you want to add more admins, 
you just copy it over from admin or whatever, however you want to do it. So it's just going to copy it all over and then you're going to make a new user. And then we can set the access and everything else. So there's a bunch of different settings in here, how you want to have their profile set up. It's just all row based access controls, however you want it. Here's your access. If you want them to be able to access all the libraries or just, I'm going to guess, yes, yeah, just if you don't want them to be able to access everything, you could just set which ones you want them to be able to access. You could also set parental controls. So if you have maybe kids and you're going to have it set up on like their fire stick or something, you could limit what the kid's account is able to watch. If you want to just be able to watch, you know, PG or whatever, you can set it in there. And then you could also change the password or set the password for the new user. That's how we set up new users. And if we come back over here, we have Ember Premiere. So you would just come over here if you're interested, you could purchase it and then you would enter your key here. Let's say down the road after you get your MB server set up and if you want to add another library, you can. You just come over here to libraries on the left, new library and then you're all set. Or if you add media and you want to rescan it, you could scan it right over here. We have advanced where we can change pretty much basic stuff. Nothing too crazy, but that's how we go through the library. There is live TV, like I was saying, if you want to add sources, there's HD home run. Or I'm guessing if you have like an antenna to pick up uh, a broadcast, you could do it that way. I don't really do anything with live TV, so I'm just going to leave that. Here's your network settings. If you need to change anything in particular, like you want to run it on a different port, or you're going to change the IP, you could do it right in here. It's probably also helpful to set a static IP in the router or wherever your DHCP server is, just so this doesn't get released if something happens. Next option is transcoding. So by default, we're not going to have hardware transcoding. We're only going to have it on the software side, I guess. Um, it's pretty standard amongst the, the servers. This is how Plex does it. So if you want to enable it when it's available, we're going to click yes. I am only running this off of a Zima board, so I don't expect the transcoding to be too great. I'm just going to leave all these settings default because I don't have anything to really transcode with on this machine. If you have a database, this is probably okay. So it even says these are advanced options and you should leave them default. Uh, I'm good with that. Over here is going to tell you anything that's converted. So if you have your your media transcoded or anything that's going to convert it over to have a better playing quality, you can see that in here. If you have Premiere, I believe it is that you get the cinema intros, and it shows so you have your options over here. You have subtitles. So if you want to use any of those services that you can get subtitles for, you could do it right in here. And then there's webhooks. If you're interested, you could probably link this up to Discord, and you could have it set for certain webhooks for notifications. Um, I don't know if this would really be something I would be interested in. Maybe like the server options, so you can see when it restarts or there's an update, maybe new media, but I don't think you want to see all the time when you know there's playback or user options. But if you want, you can. There's webhooks. Other than that, we can see our devices that are connected. We have your downloads. I'm not really familiar how the downloads work on this with the camera upload. Um, this is something that's pretty specific to MB, it seems. And then over here, advanced, we do actually have our plugins. This is pretty similar to how Jellyfin worked. So I'm gonna say that there's, these are the basic plugins. You have your catalog, so if you wanna get anything extra, you could throw those in there. So you know, if you have, like we want auto-organize or backup, you can. I'm gonna bet there's probably one for um, like appearance. So you could change how everything looks, make it look nice. But you have a whole bunch of stuff in here if you wanna take a look. Uh, we'll just do something for reporting so we could take a look. So let's just do the statistics. I'm gonna guess you just have to install it. Looks pretty easy. We're gonna click OK. Now we're just gonna to have to restart the server for it to take effect. So that's okay. I'm gonna take care of that and we'll be right back. So I just rebooted the server and you can actually see over here it says it's up to date. So we're all set. Now if I come back down here to plugins, we can scroll through and go find the statistics. So there's no configuration. Please run in the background. That's fine. So we'll just go through and mess with it. Um, so like I said, there's no configuration found. I have nothing to show because I haven't played anything. So there's no stats, but as you go through, there'll be some data to show and you see over here, here's the statistics folder. So that's with that plugin that's going to show you, you know, who's watching what, how long they're watching, stuff like that. If you're interested, there's plenty of other plugins and the setup should be pretty similar. You just got to select them and then install it. But now you're running your own MB server. Once you get some users set up, you can share it with your friends. And if you have it set up to access outside your house. You could do it through there, or if you want to just have it for streaming inside your house and your local network, you could do it that way too. And then you just have your dashboard and get any of the apps you need, whether you use an NVIDIA Shield, a Fire Stick, or a Roku, anything else, it's all out there and you could do it. 
So that was just how to set up MV uh, media server on a Zima board or Casa OS. I ran on a Zima board, but Casa OS can run on anything. So if you have like an old PC, a mini PC or anything like that, you can install Casa OS on there and then just install MV right through there just following this video. Casa OS is really cool because it has all the tools in there. So you can install any of the support programs to go with MB if you're interested, like uh, the requesting program, like Overseer or any of the stats, like the Tooly, stuff like that. It's all in there and you can install it really easily. Uh, if you're interested, I have some videos on the Tooly, Overseer, and I think I have a Jelly Seer video too in there. I'll look through and I'll get some links in below if you're interested in that stuff. But that's how you set up MB Home Media Server. I'll have links to all my gear I use in my home lab below. They're all Amazon links if you're interested in checking them out. I'll have a link to my Discord server if you want to join up. We get chat about projects or you know, if anybody runs into any issues, how we go. Building up a community, so let's see you over in Discord. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you could drop a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and more people see the videos. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.